do we know something about Wang Yijong? Yeah. Uh, he is a famous uh, Chinese writer uh, concentrating on the Sino-Tibetan relations and some environmental uh, issues and uh, first, first of all the political uh, the situation in China. And he's also the husband of uh, Sir Nasser. So, uh, there are two famous outstanding writers and scholars uh, under the same roof. So, uh, I, will, mm, I, I, I did the translation of his piece and I would read it, mm, which I did a good job. Okay, yeah. All friends who present here today can touch the huge loss caused by Elliot passing away. This has made a hard to fear boy both in the, in the world and in our hearts. His charming voice and smile, his wise, his wise and humorous conversation, his kindness and earnest to friends, his abhorrence of evil, all have become memories with the termination of his physical life and were fade away from us with no return. However, his spiritual life were lost in this world and were accompany us all the way till the end. The spiritual life here I'm talking about is not a generic phrase. Also, it's not only refers to the academic achievements which every scholar will leave. And of course, he did retain his intellectual heritage as a part of human wisdom treasure. What I want to stress is the role model he set for us. If we can keep on following this model after his passing away, his, his spiritual life is not only not dead, but can obtain a new vitality. In the spirit of Eliot, the most that I admire and respect and also what I think is the most valuable is his pursuit of truth. This does not seem to be special. The pursuit of truth is right and proper, and everyone can say, can say it as a purpose. However, there is a difference here. When facing other, camp, other camps, factions, or opposites, Showing the pursuit of truth is simple and easy, for black or white is crystal clear and self-evident, and with no need of hesitation. And everyone will even compete to be outstanding in, in that, and sometimes become a race to go extreme. However, whether people are pursued in this way is the truth, or the identity of common ideas, or even just the group interests. In the end, there's a doubt. In my opinion, particularly when facing his own camp, own course, and own beloved guru, if someone can still adhere to being critical, refuse any dogma, challenging the authority and dare to be the dissident in spite of being rebuked by his colleagues and the risk of being marginalized, by this way, this person could be called a real pursuer of truth. Eliot was such a kind of person. We all know Aristotle once said, I love my teacher, I love truth more. Everything should give away to the pursuit of truth, and this is the touchstone of being a truth pursuer or not. From the perspective of love, being a dissident, embeds a much deeper love than being a blind follower. Holding a descent is not easy. The deeper you love something, the more difficult you criticize it. Nothing is more pleasant and simpler and easier than always speaking <coughs> some pleasant and uh, complimentary and comfortable words. However, seeing obvious mistakes but never criticize isn't it kind of betrayal to the sins you love? Elliot dedicated his whole life to Tibet and Tibetan cause, but he was never a vulgar scholar who takes Tibet as an access to benefit and fame, nor a spec <coughs> speculator trying to take advantage from the Tibetan cause.
Gibraltar was the place where his love rooted, and was the pathway leading him to the truth. The reason I made such an assertion lies in the role he played as a dissident. The Chinese government, his dissent was clear and strong. To Tibetans in his desire, he also spoke out his own voice. Those who see <laughs> Tibet as a project for resources always seem to be neutral and concentrate on academic issues only. And by this way, they won't offend any side. Or some other people will take a side, <clears throat> get, get rid of those who dissenting opinion, with dissenting opinions, and finally try to maximize the rich poor interests from one single side. In the eyes of these sophisticated, sophisticated guys, Elliot, Elliot offending both sides way was stupid and subtle. Mm -hmm. But if I have to vividly describe the way of pursuing truth, the very first idea jumping into my mind is offending both sides. <laughs> offending the both sides holds the position nearest to truth itself, for truth must be independent and free. A truth must be independent and free from being monopolized by anyone and always welcome question and challenge. So I believe the spirit of I love my teacher, I love truth more is the most valuable part of Elliot's spiritual life. So there was no better way to commemorate Elliot than inherit his spirit, which were remedy the loss and the gap made by his passing away. Once his spirit lives together with our living, he will continue to contribute love and power to his beloved Tibet through the living. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>